I'm going to be honest with you. I was scared to start trash can cleaning. There's a lot of different things that go within it. I didn't even know if I was going to like it. Imagine going out and cleaning people's dirty, smelly trash cans. Obviously, I was a little worried. There was a lot of stuff I might have to get. But when I considered starting this kind of business, I was actually even more scared because there's so many more things that are included. Stick around to the end of the video to one, find out what kind of business I'm about to start. And two, I want to offer you a lifetime membership into my school community where I have tons of different courses covering tons of different kind of industries and bi-weekly coaching calls so stick around for that once again the main reason i was scared to start trash can cleaning or any other kind of business is you have to understand that you are going into an industry where you have no idea what kind of system you're going to have you have no idea how much equipment you're going to have to buy or how much it's going to cost to buy that equipment also, you have no idea what to expect going into it, what kind of problems are going to come your way. So whenever I considered maybe starting this kind of business, which I'm going to tell you the business right now, it's a, if you need help keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, or collecting payments from all of your customers for free, then check out Quote IQ in the App Store and the Google Play Store, or you can try any paid tier right now for just $1 at MyQuoteIQ.com, which is going to be the first link in the comment section and the description. Also, if you sign up for any tier for a year using my link, you're going to get a free coaching call with me. Vending machine business wow celebration a lot of things came to mind like hey listen the first thing i was like okay how am i gonna get one of these machines is this something you could just inherit is this something you can find on the side of the road no you're gonna have to buy one of these machines so if you're not aware of facebook marketplace this is the first place that i went and looked typed in vending machines in there and try to see where in my area can i buy a vending machine so a lot of the differences are going to come into age of the vending machine any problems it's going to have what kind of vending machine it is snack versus beverage which as somebody coming into the business i have no idea i don't know which one's going to perform better i don't know what age it's going to be okay for me to get one at and if there were any problems actually would i really know how to fix them probably not so in the event of buying a machine i know i'm gonna have to spend 1500 to like two thousand dollars and that's if i don't even want a brand new machine that's if i just want something to start off say okay cool i'm gonna come into this vending business i'm gonna fill the machines up and i'm gonna see if i can make any money with it but the other piece comes inside of it you're like okay so once you buy this machine where are you gonna put it there's also a lot of different options when it comes to that you can buy a machine and you can place it somewhere else or that's if you're gaining a location secondly you can buy the machine with a location already involved this may sound like the easier option to a lot of people and even to me myself i'm like okay cool so i can buy the machine and then also take the person's location that it's already in so about 50 percent of the hard part is already done i can have my machine already somewhere i don't even have to pick it up all i have to do is be able to buy the snacks purchase the location and the vending machine from this person but a lot of questions are coming up in my mind i'm like okay why is this person selling this location is this a good location am i going to be able to move inventory really quickly are there any problems with this vending machine and and that result, all you're able to do is ask questions. But of course, this person is not going to tell you everything that you want to know. People on Facebook Marketplace, obviously, you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. You want to say, okay, cool. What I'm about to buy from this guy, hopefully, is in great mint condition. Secondly, hopefully, the location that he has it in, he did his due diligence. And whenever he got it, he may have known somebody. He may have known, hey, listen, someone already had had something here. Maybe he bought the location from another person, too and he knows that it sells. So I'm thinking, what was his vested interest in this location that it's in currently? Also, what is wrong with the location that this guy is actually selling the business or is it merely just too much for him to handle? So at the end of the day, would I actually rather not just buy my own vending machine and then try to do a little bit of due diligence, go around, find new places, maybe even run marketing through my marketing strategy that's inside of my school to find people that are looking to place vending machines in different places. So I know a lot of people that have actually had vending machines in the past and they talk about, putting them in plants and those plant workers just devour all the food inside of them. You could put it in some sort of office. You could put it in some sort of gym. Um, that kind of situation is going to change up what kind of snacks you're going to put in there. Obviously, if you're putting it in a gym, you're going to have some of those people that like they feel like they need a treat. So like after the situation where they work out, then they're going to go buy a treat from you. And then, you know, you could actually sell out pretty well because the amount of volume of like foot traffic inside of places like that is big. One of the ones that I did find is inside of a mechanic shop. So, you know, people are sitting there, they're sitting in the chairs, they're waiting, maybe even an hour at a time, two hours at a time, depending on what they're getting, maybe even an oil change, they're sitting there for like 45 minutes. Do you think if they saw a vending machine in the corner, they're not going to think about buying a snack? Also, the other problem is a lot of these vending machines are like cash and coins only, which that doesn't make any sense. Everybody is using card and digital kind of payments now. So something like that is not going to work. And that's my first check off. Like, hey, if this is something that doesn't have like 
a Apple Pay on it or like a card option, I don't want that machine. And once again, another massive problem for me is repairs. Say I come in there and the dollar reader is broken or the Apple Pay function is broken and whatever, any sort of like situation where it's not vending out any of the candy, any of the drinks, any of the snacks, what do you do? Are there like vending machine repairmen that I can just easily contact up? Probably not. So in that event, you're gonna have to find somebody who knows how to fix machines and worst case scenario, you may even end up having to bring the machine to another place to get fixed. Then what, right? Then you're gonna have to move it from that location out. The people are gonna be asking questions. Hey, where's everything at? Where are our snacks? We demand the snacks come back today. Obviously, if everything's broken, they're not gonna be able to get any snacks. And you're gonna have to figure out, hey, I need a truck, I need a trailer, I need a way to drop this off. Then you're gonna have to give that truck trailer back unless you already have something like that set up for yourself. And you might want to, because if you plan on scaling up, you're gonna have to be running multiple vending machines, keeping them somewhere, obviously, and knowingly having to transport them from place to place. And I even talked to a guy and he said, listen, if something breaks, you can take it out of the machine. So you can try to disassemble the machine yourself, bring whatever is broken to the person for them to fix. This is just, I mean, a wild scenario. And in that case, I would rather just pay somebody whatever I would have to pay for them to show up to the machine location for me and fix it. That way, you know, I'm paying them. Everything's all inclusive. It's done. It doesn't have to be moved around here and moved around here. And, hey, I'm having to coordinate with four different people. Hey, what time is this going to be done at? How long is this going to take? Because I want to get my machine back in the location. Every day that I'm not there, the snacks are going to be expiring, right? Whatever inventory you have is going to be expiring and needs to be moving through the machines off the shelves. But but if it's not, you're gonna be losing money there, losing money that it's not presently in front of people so they can't buy your snacks. Lastly, and like I just talked about, snack expiration and inventory where you're gonna have to purchase some sort of location in order to even hold this kind of inventory, like all the snacks that you're gonna need. This is only assuming maybe you have a couple vending machines. If you only have one machine, I can't imagine it being that crazy. Hopefully your location is pretty decent and you're moving snacks in and out, in and out, because if you're buying them in bulk, you're gonna be buying an entire, say you buy a 30 pack of Cheetos, right? And you're only getting rid of like 10 at a time. So the longer you have them in there, your Cheetos are going to expire. So then what, you're throwing away so many snacks if you're not getting enough movement. Also, you are going to be constantly having to buy new snacks and new this and new that. Say that people don't like what's in here and they like this instead. So all that stuff, maybe that 30 pack of Cheetos you just bought, the people don't even actually want it. They're saying, ah, well, you know, we would rather this inside of the machine. So now you're like, okay, cool. This isn't even selling anyway. So it's in my best interest to remove it from the machine, but you're losing all kinds of money on the stuff that's expiring and the stuff that you have to get rid of because it wasn't a, it wasn't a big player inside of your vending machine. So you want to make money. You want something that's actually going to sell. But these are just my simple concerns and to say that starting a business is very rough and it's very hard. And even though it's a little bit of a step away from trash can cleaning, it's something that is very scary. And I was equally as stressed because I got to figure it all out. And if you're interested in getting that lifetime membership into the school community, comment down below snack. If you're looking to start your trash can cleaning business, you're in the right spot. Thanks so much for checking out my school community. Let me tell you about a couple of the things you're gonna get when you do join. First and foremost, I'm gonna give you guys my A to Z guide on how you can start a trash can cleaning business and do it yourself. Secondly, I'm gonna teach you guys the exact pricing strategy that I've used to land each and every customer, get the best responses you can. You're also gonna get my step-by-step -step guide on how I was able to land $10,000 of trash can cleaning and mobile detailing customers all for free. And then I'm gonna give you guys the before and after pictures that I use so that you can use them to land these customers yourself. Also, we're going to be doing live Q&A so that I can answer any particular questions you guys do have. There's a forum that you can submit questions in that we have direct access to answer. And there's a ton of different guys in here trying to start the same service businesses that you are, trying to make a ton of different money just like you. It's also not only trash can cleaning. I do offer many other services, pressure washing, mobile detailing, lawn care. And I'm going to be giving you guys all kinds of game on how you can start your business, what equipment you need, how much you need to charge, and how you can make tons of money. So if you're serious about getting started and you want to join a community of like-minded people, hit the button down below and join today.